Hello, my friends. I'm 28 female, and I'm so irate right now that I don't even know what to do. I have nowhere else to turn, so I thought I'd come to this place and just vent to all you fine people. I'm super stressed out right now, so I would appreciate any advice you people are willing to throw my way. There's a lot of information I need to get out of the way, so bear with me. This is going to be a long post. When I was a little girl, I had what I would describe as my idyllic middle-class American family, you could possibly imagine. My mother and father were happily married and madly in love. My dad was making waves in his field and had recently opened a successful ice cream parlor. I was a happy little girl who loved playing outside. I'll admit, I was a bit spoiled being an only child, but it was what I had grown accustomed to. We went on nice vacations every summer and we had cookouts on all the major holidays. We ate shredded chicken sandwiches at the baseball game every season, but then in the blink of an eye, it was all taken away from me. I was eight years of age when my mother tragically passed away in an accident. My whole world was shattered, and it was a hugely devastating event for a child my age to go through. My dad comforted me throughout all of the heartache and despair, and with the time, things began to look up. Things would never be the same, but I erroneously believed I could eventually pick up the pieces and move from this terrible event. What I did not realize at that young age was that my life was about to get even worse. Enter the world of Kira, my narcissistic stepmother who pulled the wool over my father's eyes and seduced him when the most vulnerable state he was in and at his lowest. I can't forget her rotten offspring from her previous marriage either, my stepbrother Wellington, and my stepsister Peach. My father was lonely and starved for affection. I knew he was stressed out, but constantly tried to juggle being a single father, raising a younger girl on top of the mounting responsibilities of the work related to his growing ice cream parlor. Well, frankly, I think Kira just saw my father as a chance for a free ride and a boatload of cash because my dad was becoming quite well-known in the community for his business acumen. I knew that's a dirty assumption to make about a woman, but I think if you look up Gold Digger in the dictionary, you would find a picture of Kira sitting there with one of her expensive Gucci bags. Well, all she was good for was spending my father's hard-earned money and being a nagging jerk and an enormous thorn in my path from day one. She acted like a completely different person when she was dating my dad. Well, but as soon as they've been married, she flipped the script and turned into a giant jerk. It's a classic tactic utilized by manipulators who only see human beings as merely means to an end. Well, that's truly how I felt about Kira. I would not be surprised if one of her ancestors was Ivan the Terrible or Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> And don't even get me started on Wellington and Peach. Those two were rotten towards me from the very first playdate as children. I remember the first time Wellington and Queen Peach came over to our house when I was a child. They ate all my snacks and broke one of my Barbie dolls. And when I told my father, Kira, Wellington, and Peach managed to convince them that it was my fault. It was the first time I've ever been treated like a mere second-class citizen in my own home. I guess you can say it was a jarring experience, but it was unfortunately one I was going to have to get used to. My feelings and desires were going to be continually invalidated and tossed aside like a dirty diaper. That's often how I felt living in my own home. I cried the day I found out my father and Kyra were getting married. I was quite a smart cookie for my age. The tender age of 10, I knew full well my father's marriage meant that old turd and her lousy kids would be moving into our house. My sanctuary was going to be ruined. I still don't understand it, and I never will. Kira could hardly hold a job, and she had two children from different fathers who hit the road and got as far away from her as they could. Her kids did not know the meaning of respect or boundaries, and I know they were raised poorly, so I try not to judge too harshly. But Wellington and Peach never changed. From the moment they moved into my house, they abused me. They lied about me and made me look bad in front of my own father. They would play pranks on me and physically abuse me as well, and 
My father was so wrapped up in his work and so eager to please Kyra that he often dismissed my concerns. I'll always love my father, but to this day, this feeling of resentment sometimes stings like a stingray when I'm alone at night lost in my thoughts. Things never changed over the years. Kyra was a drunk, and Wellington and Pete started partying and using drugs at a very early age. This just made their behavior even more volatile. I grew up depressed and got addicted to gambling and other vices I don't even want to share with you guys. And I messed up my grades in community college so bad, was forced to drop out. I'm not making excuses for my mistakes, I'm just showing you how low I felt in life. And how badly I'd let things get so messed up. All five of us were still living in the family home when one of the worst days of my life ever. My father was diagnosed with a terminal illness. The whole event was such a punch to the gut. I was in a complete fog for a while and life felt like a blur. The busy, hardworking man he always was. The old war horse worked his tail off until he could not physically do it anymore. I was constantly checking in on him and providing him with his comfort in his final days. What were Kira and Wellington and Peach doing, getting drunk, doing drugs, and going out to the club? They didn't show much empathy for my father. When he passed, these three turds did seem a tad bit bummed that their personal ATM was now gone, but beyond that, they were completely unfazed. Dealing with them my whole life, putting up with all their crap, and then I had to watch them disrespect the man who had cared so much about them. The man who made their very lifestyle possible. I mean, it was ludicrous. At the funeral, I remember Wellington asking me if he was going to get, quote, a fat load of cash from the dead man. I wanted to punch him in the face for the comment. It was disrespectful to begin with, but it was funny Wellington thought my father was super rich. He had to sell his ice cream parlor business after he got sick, and the finances took a turn for the worse. When my father was dying... He requested something of me that mortified me. I did not want to agree, but out of respect for my father and the short amount of time we had left, I did agree. What was the request? The good news was the family home was going to be in my name since my father could see I was the most responsible member of the family. This fact was clear as day even when he was essentially blindfolded by the spell of his new wife's charm. But the bad news was that my father was asking me to allow Kira... Wellington and Peach to continue living in the family home, and I quote you this. Oh, until they could get their finances in order and find themselves a place of their own. I nearly cried when my father said that, but I kept a brave face and pressed on because I knew he needed me in this time of illness and weakness. Well, here we are now in the present day. I'm still struggling financially, but I'm trying to get back on my feet. Sure. Inheriting a house takes care of quite a few worries, but there are still utilities, groceries, and other expenses that must be accounted for. I'm currently a manager at the best seafood restaurant in town, Long John Silver's. What about the turds I'm forced to live with? Well, Kira, she doesn't work at all. She just drinks wine, pops pills, and watches Dr. Phil on TV all day long. Peach, oh, Peach. She takes after her mother, that foul, vile woman. She loves to get drunk, go shopping, and be a general nuisance. She gets a job and can't keep them more than a week, and, well, Wellington, he actually got his very first job ever recently at the age of 22. Well, guess what? He got fired after he got in a fight with a co-worker, and I even had to bail him out of jail. Wellington tells me he should not have to work a job because he's a punk rock band called The Boys. I mean, it's embarrassing. What has become of my father's legacy? I try to stay out of the house as much as I can because when I'm here, I feel like a prisoner in my own home. I spend most of my time working at Long John Silver's, and when I go home from work today, I was met with a horrible discovery. You see... I've kept a collection of photos of my mother displayed in my bedroom for years. I miss her every single day. And then I often think about how she might feel if she saw the state my life was in and how poorly I've been treated by those who were supposed to be family. So, I kept those photos as mementos, and they would give me comfort in my time of despair. When I got home from work today, the photos of my mother were nowhere to be seen. It was clear my room has been rummaged through. So I get angry and I start to scream. 
I demanded to know who dared to defile my bedroom and the pictures of my mom. Kira spoke up with a sly grin on her face. I could feel my heart pounding like a freight train. Oh, I decided to give your room a little makeover, sweetie. Uh, you know, get rid of the bad vibes in the house. I immediately went off on her. I told her this was not her house. She told me I needed to pipe down and relax. I could not believe the disrespect. My blood was starting to boil. Ah, <sighs> my blood pressure's through the roof. I had to remove myself from the situation before I did something rash. I was this close to doing something I knew I would regret. So, I decided to type up this story for you guys today. I need some advice. How should I handle this? I can't believe Kira had the audacity to do this. I mean, what should I do? Let me know in the comments how you feel about the situation. I mean, I can truly, and I mean truly, use the help right now. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. Can you believe the audacity of Kira to take down those pictures on the wall of OP's mother? Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second, hit that subscribe button. It does help support the channel a lot, and this way you never miss another juicy drama. All right, let's go ahead and jump into update number one. Hello, OP's back with another update. Oh boy, it's been quite an eventful day. Let's get right down to business, shall we? I read through all your comments on my post last night, and it left me a lot to think about. I had a lot of food for thought to digest. I decided to follow the advice that seemed to be the most popular. Yesterday was a rude awakening that I desperately needed to make some drastic changes in my life. I knew the house was in my name, but I decided to call up Mr. Devante for some extra guidance on the matter. You see... Mr. Devante's my lawyer. He was my father's lawyer when my father was alive, and he was also my dad's best friend outside of the workplace. So, uh, I knew him quite well. I could tell he never liked Kira or her lousy, rotten brats when I was growing up. And when I called him and explained the current predicament in which I found myself, Mr. Devante was not surprised in the least. He reminded me that I was the rightful owner of the house, he told me there's absolutely no penalty for violating my father's request to allow Kira to live with me. It was never written directly into his will. My father had simply trusted me to do his bidding. Well, I was beginning to realize it's time for me to reclaim my independence. I loved my father, and I miss him every day, but he's not here for me anymore, and I don't need his approval. Speaking to Mr. Devante cleared things up for me, and it's time to give my stepmother the boot. She's getting out of this house once and for all. She's crossed the line with me too many times, and Mr. Devante explained that the destruction of property was plenty reason to kick her to the curb. <laughs> On short notice, too. I was filled with nervousness and glee at the proposition of finally getting Kira out of my life. So, I decided to call the police. That's right. For assistance, because I was fully aware this situation could indeed get very, very ugly. I tried to act uh, as normal as I possibly could. I did not want to give away any part of my plan because I knew if Kira got a whiff of anything nefarious, she would fly off the handle and make a scene. I knew a surprise ambush was the best course of action, and Mr. Devante reassured me of this fact. Mr. Devante even offered personally to lend his services by coming to my house to help with the process of evicting Kira out. He brought some cops with him. When everyone arrived, there was quite a sizable police presence at the residence. I could tell Kira, Peach, and Wellington were confused and oh so nervous. Well, there was a loud knock on the door and a voice yelling, Open up! It's the police! Oh boy, the festivities were about to kick off. Kira starts to scream. She cried, she begged, she pleaded. But for the first time in decades, Kira was not getting her way. Oh man, she clearly could not handle being told no. She thinks she's the center of attention and the center of the universe, and she's nothing more than a huge narcissist. So, the word no simply isn't in her vocabulary, and I must admit I laughed in her face. I had half a mind to kick out the whole crew of turds, but Kira begged and pleaded with me. She convinced me to allow Peach and Wellington to stay in the house for an extra 30 days, just to give them time to save up money and find a place of their own. 
Kira said she was going to stay at her brother's apartment. So, she gathered up most of her belongings and the police escorted her from my home. After everything was over, there was an awkward silence in the house. The tension was so thick you could stick a fork in it. I could tell Peach and Wellington were coping and seething. I told them if they wanted to mess around with me, they would find out what was up quite quickly. Updates Number 2 Hello, everybody. I'm back with another update. I'm livid. All right, after my last update, I saw the comments that were telling me I was out of my mind for agreeing to give Wellington and Peach a chance to live in my house for an extra four weeks in order to save up and get back on their feet to find a place. I should have known this whole thing was ludicrous and unrealistic of an arrangement, and I was more than generous by even giving these idiots an extra day in my home. But... I was only trying to do the compassionate thing, you know. You would think after getting the news that you had only 30 days in which to save up enough money to get a place of your own, you would stop messing around and, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, get a job, perhaps? Well, that would be the sensible thing to do that reasonable adults would do. But Peach and Wellington are the exact opposite of whatever a sensible adult might be. I worked a grueling 12-hour long shift at Long John Silver's. I was looking forward to some rest and relaxation when I got home. I wanted to put on my PJs, curl up with a tub of vanilla ice cream, and watch a few episodes of Boston Legal before sleeping long and hard in my warm and comfortable bed. Well, it turns out Peach and Wellington had different plans for me. When I got home, I immediately knew something was, uh, off. When I parked in the driveway and was greeted by the sight of around a dozen or so vehicles parked all around our yard. What the heck's going on? I had to run inside and investigate whatever idiocracy was afoot here. I was immediately hit with the booming sound of Blink-182, blasting at maximum volume when I opened up that door. Peach and Wellington had invited a ton of their friends over and they were throwing a party. It should not really surprise you one bit to know those jerks never once asked me for permission to throw a party at my darn property. Well, this was a bunch of baloney, and I was about to set these clowns straight. I turned off the Bluetooth, and the sound of Blink-182 abruptly stopped. People started hooting and hollering and calling me names, but I stood my ground and spoke firmly. I told these people they need to leave my property immediately or there's going to be heck to pay. That's when Wellington thought it would be cool to smash a beer bottle on the floor. And you know what? I'm going to say it. That's the last straw. Yep. Looks like Peach and Wellington could only hold up their end of the little uh, agreement for not even an entire day. I called the police and explained the situation to them right then and there. Peach and Wellington begged and pleaded, but I was pressing charges for their reckless silliness. They crossed a line throwing this party and trashing my house, and the police actually arrested them. Update number three. Hello everyone, OP here for another update. I was hoping I could get some relaxation if I, you know, would call the police and have Peach and Wellington removed from my home. But it looks like these turds will stop at nothing to get even. They can't even see that they're the ones responsible for the mess that they're in. These jerks... Keep messing with my life and I'm going to make them regret it. You mess around, you find out. It all started earlier today. I am uh, made my morning commute to work just as I always do. It was time to cook breakfast at Long John Silver's. When I got to work, I was given some disturbing and unsettling news. The regional manager has been summoned to the store, so I knew something serious went down. What I did not know was that it involved I... The regional manager told me I was being suspended from work due to three complaints filed about me being rude. Three people had called Long John Silver, blasted our Facebook page, blasted our Google review page, blasted our Yelp page, everything. I could tell by how the reviews and troll remarks were written that this coordinated effort was clearly the result of Kira, Peach, and Wellington working together trying to get, quote, even with me. I went home. I was so stressed out, I was crying my eyes out, as if it was not enough to effectively ruin my entire youth and actually abuse me to no end. These clowns had no uh, sort of remorse. They're now interfering with my livelihood. They know I'm financially dependent on my job at Long John Silver's. 
I've got bills to pay. These people don't know what it's like to be a real adult. I immediately called Mr. Devante for advice. When he answered the phone, he sounded quite clearly distraught and ticked off as well. Well, I explained what just happened to me, and he simply said he wasn't surprised. Well, uh, okay, I asked him why, and Mr. Devante explained to me that he too has been harassed by Kira, Peach, and of course that jerk Wellington. His Facebook page, his Google reviews page, everything's been defaced by the trolls. These jerks have even left bad reviews on lawyer websites as well as prank calling his law office to tie up the phone lines. Can you believe it? Mr. Devante and I discussed possible solutions. He came up with a great idea. It's going to require some work, but I think I can accomplish my goal and get this problem sorted out once and for all. Update number four. Hey guys, OP here with another update for everybody. It was another eventful day and after the craziness that transpired, I'm quite confident Mr. Devante and I got the evidence we needed to take down Kira, Peach, and Wellington. I decided to call Kira and extend a peace offering, an olive branch of sort. When she answered the phone, she was initially quite curt and rude towards me, but once I started talking about possibly giving her what she wanted, she perked right up and started listening. I told her that I want to discuss the quote state of our family. I said that we could possibly discuss her moving back in. I told her to bring Peach, bring Wellington too. I asked them all to attend dinner with me at Cracker Barrel, my favorite. I knew they would not be able to resist the offer. I mean, what they did not know, though, I was going to be recording the entire event. So I arrived and saw Kira and Peach wearing fancy dresses, and Wellington was adorned in his finest tuxedo. Tuxedo, I thought. This is Cracker Barrel. They were all being friendly towards me for possibly the first time in their lives, and I knew it's only because they thought I was going to give them what they wanted. Well, they had another thing coming. I steered the conversation in my favor, and I was at first friendly and cordial, but I slowly took a turn. I asked them why they had trolled my Long John Silver and gotten me suspended from work. They looked nervous and denied the accusation. Then I asked them about what happened with Mr. Devante. That's when they really started to freak out. Finally, Wellington was the one who snapped. He said point blank that they sabotaged my job and tried to screw me over. Mr. Devante as well, because they quote wanted to get even with me. I brought up the fact that I'd kindly let them live in my house. Kira snapped and said the home should belong to her, and she called my father a dead jerk. Oh, well that just crossed the line with me, and I told her to shut her mouth. I heard a loud scream and I was about to dodge a piece of hash brown casserole Peach threw right at me. I would have gobbled it out of the air if I could have. I love their casserole, but that's beside the point. Kira and Wellington then tried to attack me right in the middle of the restaurant. Luckily, somebody at Cracker Barrel called the police before things could get out of hand. This time, all three of those clowns were arrested. Final update. Hello, everyone. This is going to be my final update. Thank you for the reading of this story and providing great advice and lots of support for me. I truly could not have survived this ordeal without your help, so thank you. I'm going to miss you guys, but I must admit I'm glad this is over. I'm glad that this problem is resolved. I was stressed out about court, but I knew I had gathered all the evidence we needed to cast Kira, Peach, and Wellington in a poor light. The court was sure to know what type of jerks they were dealing with. The entire interaction at Cracker Barrel was recorded, and it helped that there was a video surveillance from the restaurant, as well as witness statements and accounts and police testimony. Mr. Devante worked his magic in the courtroom and presented the evidence with the finesse and charisma of Clark Gable, or Robert Redford even. <laughs> the three jerks had no leg to stand on once the evidence has been presented. There was no possible defense left. The judge saw their history of violence and deception and sentenced them to some jail time. That's right. More importantly, the judge ordered Kira, Peach, and Wellington to abide by the rules of a restraining order. If these turds even get near me, they're going back to the slammer. Thank you for reading. Shout out to Mr. Devante for completely handling the situation and making OP just feel okay throughout the entire process. As for Kira, Wellington, and Peach, 
I think it's safe to say they got exactly what they deserved. Karma came and struck. Those were three of the most toxic people we've seen in one story all together. I mean, imagine having to put up with one person, two people, but three toxic people in your life after dealing with so much. I can't even imagine what OP was going through. Anyways, if you guys have been in the same situation or maybe something similar, post in the comment section down below what you think that you would have done different or maybe some advice you want to share. My name's Mr. Reddito. I narrate stories like this every day, so if you guys enjoy this type of story, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, and of course remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.